How is he only a 90 overall? You have Richard Sherman, some old man who can't run for Jack. You need to put respect on Zach Ertz's name and a bunch of other tight ends that should be higher than Rob Gronkowski. The man uh, hasn't played since 2018. He's not going to be the NL MVP. And then, <laughs> and then he goes on to an Instagram live where he, he seems to have been under the influence Smoking a cigar. I don't think MVP is indicative of the best player in the league. Welcome back to Goat Chat. We are back here with episode 27. Before we get into the episode, huge shout out, happy birthday to Connor Wood on our recording. So it's Sunday. Today's his birthday. If you haven't seen our Instagram, we're going to play that video right now, just in case you didn't see it, just in case you didn't see it for Connor's birthday. So we're going to go there quickly and then head into the uh, go to the number 27. Giannis and Kawhi are playing better than LeBron. They may not be better overall players than him, but right now they're playing better than him. I decided to cut LeBron and I regret that every morning when I wake up and I regret that every morning when I wake up and I regret that every morning when I wake up Giannis and Kawhi are playing better than LeBron so I'm going to go with that I'm going to start Giannis bench Kawhi and cut LeBron LeBron James LeBron James I'm a little kid thank you guys I really appreciate it you, you just love to bully Connor, don't you? <laughs> I do. I, well, I made that in like, I think I made it 30 minutes, so. You know what? I was watching it. I was watching it today on Instagram. I saw you tag me in it, and I, I couldn't stop laughing. I thought it was hysterical. Of tag course. LeBron on the video. <laughs> oh, by the way, tag LeBron. I found out that he has like 70 million followers, so he probably won't see it. But just in case, tag LeBron and make Connor's day. But we're going to head right into it. Go to number 27. I'm going to let Connor go first. It's his birthday. So I actually had a lot of trouble with 27 here. I couldn't really decide. I was looking at some names. I was looking at Vladimir Guerrero of base MLB. I was looking at Eddie George of the Titans in the NFL. And then I I decided to settle on someone who is younger. It's not a settle by any means. It's Mike Trout. He could arguably by the end of his career be the best baseball player of all time. His numbers now, he's been a full-time MLB player since 2012. And his numbers right now are what some people would like to finish their career with. And he, he still has eight, not eight, eight years left on his contract, nine years left on his contract, something like that. Now he's already a three-time MVP, eight-time All-Star. He was a major league player of the year, seven silver sluggers. He are, he's sitting right now at a 305 batting average, which is incredible. And as of today, Sunday, August 16th, he has 294 home runs. So I'm going to say that by the end of his 60 – the 60 game season here, he's going to hit that 300 home run mark, which is, which is incredible. So it's a younger guy. He's still in the game, but it's going to be Mike Trout. Definitely a great pick. Tommy, what do you think about this? Yeah, that's a great pick. Obviously Mike Trout by the end of this, he might be one of the best that we've ever seen, but I'm going to go with somebody that you mentioned, Connor, somebody that's more proven. It's Hall of Famer Vladimir Guerrero. Um, he's one of the best pure hairs the game's ever seen. I mean, that video, that famous video, I'm sure you've all seen it, where he hits the ball that's like, it goes off the ground. Um, he could hit anything. He was incredible. He won eight silver sluggers, won MVP, um, eight-time All-Star, um, 2,500 hits, 449 home runs. He was a 318 lifetime hitter. Um, and he had a cannon in right field. He was incredible. And, uh, and you know, his son, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., he, he could be even better than his dad. So, an incredible family there. and uh, But, yeah, Vladimir Guerrero is going to be my go the number 27. Mike, who are you going to go with? As much as I love uh, Vladimir Guerrero, I'm going to have to roll with Connor here. I just think Mike Trout's uh, <laughs> resume throughout as short of a career, his 10-year career compared to Guerrero's resume over a 16-year career, is just more impressive. It's more GOAT-like. Vlad Guerrero only has one MVP. Mike Trout already has three. I can guarantee you he's throwing at least two more on there. Um, 
Mike Trout's eight all-star appearances, seven-time Silver Slugger. Vlad has one more in each category. So by the end of his career, he's definitely going to pass Vlad in that. Yes, if you want to talk about overall stats as, as of right now, Vlad Guerrero does beat Mike Trout in that category just because he played so much longer. But I got to go with Mike Trout because he's – He's something that we have never seen before, a five-tool player that has sustained this amount of success over his 10-year period in the MLB. So I think what Mike Trout has done and what he will do has to make him the go of the number 27. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you guys. You know, I get that he's young, he's 29, but I haven't shied away from picking younger players. I picked Julia at eight with 28, and I picked um, Alex Morgan at 13. She's 31 years old. I think Mike Trout, being at 29 years old, he's done so many great things. I mean, talking about when he came into the league, 2012, won the rookie of the year. And from 2013 to now, the lowest he's been on the MVP voting was fourth. And that was only once. That is unbelievable to keep that, to keep, you know, consistently playing like an MVP. I mean, that's just insane. He's already won it three times. Who knows how many more times he's going to win it. He could win it this year. Uh, We'll just have to see how time moves on but it's got to be Mike Trout Tommy I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised you didn't pick Mike Trout I'm very surprised when you, you said know, that I, you weren't picking Mike Trout I was I was very scared for a second that I was going to hear Giancarlo Stanton <laughs> oh, no definitely not Giancarlo but no so the reason I went with Vlad was because he's a hall of famer already but it's not even a question that Mike Trout's going to be the best ever wear number 27 by the end of his career and You know, he probably is there now, but I wanted to go with somebody who's in the Hall of Fame. But, no, I mean, I wanted to pick Mike Trout, but I thought I should go with the Hall of Famer. But you guys said all incredible things about him. I mean, I didn't even realize that that the lowest he had finished was fourth in the MVP. I had no idea either. Yeah, and he's just incredible. I mean, like you said, Mike, five-tool player. So, Mike Trout, he – I think that he might end up being the best we've ever seen. Um Yeah, he's the best, Mike Trout. But, yeah, I kind of regret it. But, you know, Vlad's great. You can switch it. Uh, Okay. It's going to be our first ever switch. Just roll Uh, roll with the punches, Tommy. I'll switch switch, it. Switch, switch, switch. I'll switch it because, no, I mean, Mike Trout, how could you argue with that? I mean, I'm going to be honest, (laughs) forgot he was 27 going into this. (laughs) But Connor said it. No, no, I know. Um, I know, but then I was like, ah, I got to go with the Hall of Favor. And, uh, let, let, let me just mention here, we're all really talking about Mike Trout, yet he wasn't the go to the week last week. He didn't yeah. win. I mean, he, he possibly he could have been. Pipe down, Connor. You're, you're at the top right now. You know, the viewers gave some, you know, mercy to Matt. They gave him more. Oh, like, my. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We can talk about this during the go to the week segment. I think, you know, now we can switch. Can move on. We could, yeah, we can move on to another segment. We did have our first go chat. Go on number switch, Tommy. Tommy. So you have to go. Mike Trout, man. All right. We're going to go to the next segment. <laughs> Welcome back to Coach Chat. As you guys saw, we just had a good conversation about go to the number 27. We had our first ever switch. Mike Trout is the obvious number 27. But now we're going to move into the NBA, the playoff start. You're watching this on Monday. They start on Monday, 4 o'clock on ESPN. Um, we did a, a bracket challenge for the NHL in the bubble, so we're going to do a bracket challenge for the NBA in the bubble. That went out. Um, if you're watching this right around 1 o'clock, you still may have some time to get those picks in. If you want to join, we'll have the link in our bio on Instagram. Um, but let's get right into it. We're going to kind of discuss our picks here on our brackets. So let's start in the East, and let's start with the, the 1 versus the 8 in Milwaukee versus Orlando. Matt, what do you got? It's fairly – I want to say it's obvious, but you never know what we could pull out on Go Chat. I got Milwaukee in four. Mike? I got Milwaukee in four, too. Not much to say. Tommy? Yeah, I have Milwaukee in four as well. We're all unanimous on the Milwaukee in four. Um, Orlando's a good team, but they, they need one more player there until they, they really have that season that they need to get above that eight seed. Let's just move right down the list here in the East. We got the number four seed, Indiana Pacers, and the number five seed, Miami Heat. Mike, I'll start with you here. 
Um, I'm going with the Heat in six. I could see the Pacers winning this series if TJ Warren lights it up again, but I feel like Jimmy Butler just has his number right now. That's why I'm rolling with the Heat. Tommy? I also have the Heat in six. Matt? I got the Heat in seven. I think that TJ Warren can push it. If he plays great, which he's been playing this whole bubble, I think he can push it to seven, but ultimately the Heat are going to win. Well, I also have the Heat in six. This might, we're actually agreeing on goat chat? What? <laughs> no, I, I think TJ Warren had a great bubble experience. He had a great eight games. But him and Jimmy Butler have had some have some bad bud there. Um, Jimmy Butler went out and said that he's behind that few and he's just focused on the playoffs right now. But you got to imagine that Jimmy Butler wants to lock him down in this playoff series. That That's total BS. He, from what we know about Jimmy Butler, that's total BS. That that feud is the is in the past. He knows he, he he's a per, he's that type of person that holds grudges. He's coming after TJ Warren this year. Jimmy Butler's had some good teams in the playoffs. Uh, he was on the on the east or west side with the Timberwolves, and on the east side with the um, Raptors, Bulls. Oh, Wolves, and the oh my God, Seventy Sixers. I'm blanking here for a second. He's got a good team here in Miami. I think they can make it pretty far. Let's move right down now. We're talking about two other favorite teams here on the show. We're going to go with number three, Boston, versus the number six, Philadelphia 76ers. Tommy, you're wearing the Boston color. Let's start with you. Yeah, I do have Boston in six for this one. Um, You know, I think that the 76ers, they'll give them a little bit of a fight, but I think it's going to be the Celtics for sure. Mike? This is easy. I'm going with the, with Boston five. I think MB could steal one to two games just because Boston doesn't necessarily have that post presence to stop them unless they play Robert Williams for 30 minutes. Maybe he'll slow down MB, but without Simmons, they they, they need a lot of help. Matt, uh, I I know I said that uh, previously that Philly was going to win. Mike, there's injuries that happen. Like you can't even push that against me. Like I didn't. I thought Simmons would be playing. So, obviously, Boston is going to win in six. I think that the thing about the Sixers in Boston, that's always a that's always a great rivalry, and I think that the Sixers can give them a, a, a little run, but nothing that's going to go into game seven. I got Boston in six. Mike and I are agreeing right here. I have Boston in five. I They're just – they're a good team. Jason Maybe Taylor. Hunter, the, green all the way through the first three rounds. Well, let, let's see if we're agreeing here in the, uh, the final matchup on the East where we have Toronto versus Brooklyn. Mike, I'll start with your pick. I actually have Toronto in five. I think the Nets are going to steal a game from the Raptors. I don't think it's going to be a sweep. Um, I think, you know, the Nets have kind of surprised me a little. They are definitely going to get blown out at least two games, but I think they'll be able to steal just one from the Raptors. Matt, what's your pick here? I got Toronto with a sweep. I think Brooklyn is a they're, – they're a great future team. They play, they've had really good games in the bubble. Just think that Toronto is just going to outplay them the whole series. Tommy? Yeah, the Nets are my favorite team, but I do have Toronto in five. I agree with what you said, Matt. I think they're going to be good in the future, obviously, with KD and Kyrie, but it's just not their time right now, and the Raptors still have a really good team, so I have them in five. Mike and I are four for four in agree, and I have Toronto in five. You have the same amount of games, too? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your bracket was in late, Connor. Do you copy? <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll move over here to the west side now. We'll start we'll start at the bottom. We'll go we'll go with the two versus the seven first in the Clippers versus the Mavericks. Tommy, we'll start with you. Okay. Let's see. All right. So I have the Clippers in five. Um, you know, I don't think that Luke is gonna be enough to uh get Dallas the win here, obviously. I think the Lakers are Incredible team, and uh, yeah, I have them in five. Matt? Two words. Luka Doncic, but he's not going to win. He's not going to win. Clippers in five. I, I wish I could put – I feel like if they weren't playing the Clippers or the Lakers, they would have a really great matchup, but it's the Clippers. They, they're they going to, again, outplay them like the, I said with the Raptors, but I got them getting at one game. Mike? Uh, I got the Clippers in six. Um, I think the emergence of Porzingis is huge. Uh, for the Mavericks, everyone's talking about Doncic, but no one is talking about how well Porzingis is playing. He's back to his old Nick self, and I think the Mavs will get two, but it, I don't think it's going to go longer than two. 
Well, the streak ends here. I have the Clippers in five. I think Luka could play well enough for one game, one victory, but I, I think the Clippers are just too too powerful for them to overcome more than one win in that series. So now we'll move to the six versus the three here in the Utah Jazz versus the Denver Nuggets. Matt? Uh, I got the Nuggets in six. Wasn't so sure about this one. I just think that the Jazz, I think they're, weren't they fourth before the Titus or fifth? They've obviously, they've obviously, you know, dropping to six isn't good. I don't think that they're going to have any momentum rolling in here. I think that Denver is going to take them for a, take them for a ride this six games. Tommy? Yeah, I have an upset here. I'm going to go with the Jazz in seven. Um, I don't know. I just have a feeling that the Jazz are going to, you know, they haven't been doing as well, obviously, like you mentioned, Matt, and the team chemistry probably isn't what it was prior to the hiatus, but I, I don't know. I just have a feeling they're going to pull out the first series here. Mike? Um, I actually, you know, I, I was a huge believer in the Jazz, especially coming into the season. But from what I've seen throughout the season and now with the loss of Mike Conley for a couple of games um, at the beginning of the series, I'm going to take the Nuggets in six and maybe even five, depending on how long Mike Conley's out. Well, I'm going to agree with Tommy here with the upset. There I'm going to go Utah in six. Yikes. But they didn't have that great of a bubble eight games, whatever. But I think Donovan Mitchell is going to play great. I don't know. I've got a feeling. I've really just got a feeling. And you know when I get those – I mean, I'm at the top of the pick So when you get my – when I get my feelings, I just got to keep – I, I got to roll with it. So I'm going to go Utah in six. You really rolled last week to one and two record. Oh, yeah? How was everyone else? I was two and one. Woo! <laughs> Now, I think we'll move into the what's going to be the most challenging um, game and series to pick in the first round, the one that's going to be most entertaining to watch. It's the Houston Rockets and the OKC Thunder. It's going to be electrifying. It's going to be a great series. Matt, who do you have? I got an upset here. I'm going with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yes, that the Houston Rockets, they have Russell Westbrook and James Harden, but Russell Westbrook is battling an injury right now, and I I just searched up. I'm pretty sure he will miss game one against the Thunder. But nonetheless, this is going to be a great series. I just think that the Thunder matching up against the Rockets, um, maybe one game the Rockets will take. Like in the like if they were just playing like a regular season matchup, the Rockets might take that game. But when we're talking about a series – I got the Oklahoma City, uh, Oklahoma City Thunder starting five over the Houston Rockets starting five in seven games. Mike, um, I'm gonna have to agree with May here. Uh, I got I got OKC in seven. Um, I'm not necessarily going with the reason that y- you're going with. I'm just going purely based off the fact that Russell Westbrook is gonna not only miss game one, but he's out for the next few games. The, that's what all the reports are telling me coming out. So with the information I have about his injury right now, I'm taking the Thunder in 70 games. If Russell Westbrook was healthy, I would probably take the Rockets in six or seven. But the Westbrook injury really hinders the Rockets right now. This man was really high on the Rockets just two weeks ago. The, they lost one of their best two players. What do you want me to do? He was very high on Russell Westbrook, so I mean, I gotta give him credit for that. You know, obviously him, his player, the guy who was high on being out, is obviously gonna hurt his. Listen, James Harden is playing fantastic in the bubble, but the Thunder are just a better team overall, and James Harden hasn't shown that he could carry a team in the playoffs. Tommy, what's your pick here? I don't know. I'm gonna disagree here. I have faith in the Rockets. I think that they still have a good team. Obviously, the loss of Westbrook you know, that it could end up hurting them. But I'm going to have Houston six here, I think. I don't know. I just – I still have faith in them, and I think they're going to pull out the series against OKC. Well, I'm going to agree with Tommy. I'm going to go Houston. I've been very high on Houston throughout this entire thing. And I think losing Westbrook is definitely a big battle that they're going to have to overcome. But, I mean, James Harden's been in the playoffs without Westbrook before, and he's succeeded. He doesn't have a big guy there. He has P.J. Tucker as his center. But I, I, I don't know. I think Houston, I mean, Houston's just a good all-around team. Didn't and he have Chris Paul last player, year? If there's a player in the NBA that can, that can lead a team by himself, it's James Harden. 
Wait. Well, how many games do you have it again? I have in five. You have the Rockets. Five. In five. <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, uh, yes, James Harden didn't have Westbrook before, but he had Chris Paul. Like he, it's not like he had nothing. It's not like he had a slice of bread playing with. You guys watch. Listen, with with a. Uh... Let's break out the last two games. They've lost both those games, 104-108 to Indiana, and 96-134 to Philly. Philly. Okay, but can we, can, we not, can we not go off the scores of the last games? Because how many of the starters were playing? I'm pretty sure star, all the stars were playing against Philly. Because I watched the game. But I could be wrong, you know. I'm just – Okay, okay. Let, let, let's, let's take out the Philly game because I don't know exactly if the Rockets started really? – uh, they just outplayed them that game. They just lacked. Houston's gonna lack defense too. I mean, Dallas put like how many points did Dallas put up against them and at like, like one forty. But Houston did put up one like one forty five, one fifty right yeah, back they, on their heads. That's the thing about the Rockets. They're just gonna outscore you and outscore you, and they will not be able to do that without Russell Westbrook on their team penetrating the paint. It's just not gonna happen until he comes back. And if he does come back healthy, how is he gonna play? Is he going to play like the Russell Westbrook of old where he's healthy and explosive? Or is he going to come back and put up – just put up a big fart? <laughs> put, put up a big dud? I don't know. I, I just had a brain fart right there myself. I didn't know how to explain it. But he might come back and not play as well as he did before. We, there are so many unknowns with the Rockets. I don't know how you could take him in this series. I'm going to take him. I've, been high, I've been high on the Rockets. And I just I think they're a good all-around team, so I'm gonna take them there over the Thunder. Now we're moving into a, another matchup here. Obviously, we all got the the number eight seed correct there in Portland, and now they move on to play the Lakers. Yeah, Mike, what's your pick for this series? I actually got the Lakers in six. I think Dame will be able to steal a couple games, and I think Mel will hit a cut a clutch three here and there to seal the game to see at least one game. So I think I got to go with the Lakers, but I think Portland will be able to steal uh, two games. No more though. Tommy. I'm going to go with the Lakers here in five. I, you know, I agree with you, Mike. I think that they will get at least one game with Damian Lillard and um, they have Carmelo as well. And they play great in the, the bubble, obviously to get that eight seed. They, they uh they've been on fire, but you know it's gonna be tough to stop the Lakers. You have LeBron, Anthony Davis, and their depth is great on that team as well. So I'm gonna go with the Lakers in five. Matt, yeah, I gotta agree with Tommy. I gotta go with the Lakers in five. Um, Portland and Dallas, the, the eight and seven seeds in the West, are two very great teams. I think if they're in the East, they'd be different seeds. But you know, it's the Lakers. I mean, all in all, they're not gonna. I don't think they're sweep, but I I could see Damian Lillard pulling out one game for the Trailblazers. He's been playing great. Obviously, the bubble MVP, so and got him winning one. Well, I, I, have the, I have the Lakers in six. I, I think Dame can take over a couple games. I think they can steal a few. But now, one of my friends who, who he actually joined the our, uh, our bracket, he texted me last night. He has the Blazers in seven. Bold. That's bold. That's that's exactly the text I sent back. Is bold prediction. I'm I'm not gonna say it's not gonna happen because anything can happen. It's bold, but you never know I, though. You you do you do never know. I mean, it's it's different type of basketball. There's there's not gonna be because with playoff basketball, a lot of times is the fans are swaying the momentum, and now there's no fans there. So if Portland gets on a run there, when the Lakers are the home team. Who says that that run ever stops? Because playoff basketball is, is a lot of runs. So if, if Portland goes on an 11-0 run, a 12-0 run, 12-2 run, and they don't have that home court advantage, Portland may just keep scoring. Well, well I mean, you've seen through the bubble that teams go back and forth. You've seen the, even the opening game of the bubble. Lakers come out, they lead by 10, and then going into half, Clippers have a run. Coming out of the half, Clippers have a 14-1 to run. So basketball is just a game of runs. It's who can capitalize on those runs the most. And I think the Lakers will be able to in this series. Well, I think that's kind of going to wrap up our, uh, our NBA segment here. Obviously, once we're through round one, we'll be back and we'll tell you more about our, our round I think, two picks. 
I think we should just give out our finals just quickly, what we have right now, before one of the teams gets eliminated. So I'm just going to say mine. I got Lakers over the Bucks in seven. I've said the Lakers this whole time. I got to keep saying the Lakers. I was – the East is – the East, I have no idea. I've said the Celtics once. I've said the Raptors once. I've said the Bucks once. Going to go safe and roll with the Bucks here. I've got the Lakers over the Bucks in six. Tommy, what you got? I'm going to differ a little bit here. I have the Bucks over the Clippers in five. Tommy, I like I like the bold predictions today. I know, I know. I don't know why, but I have a feeling. <laughs> okay, well, um, I'm going to uh, differ from all you guys as well. I actually got uh, the Clippers over the Bucks in six. I think the Clippers are going to beat the Lakers in uh, seven in the conference finals. I think actually I think both conference finals will go to seven games. I think Boston will take Milwaukee to seven, but – Milwaukee will find some way to pull it out. I'm not sure if Giannis has that clutch gene. I know Jason Tatum and Kemba Walker do, but I have faith in uh, what what the Bucks have as a whole. But I still got to roll with the Clippers and my man Kawhi. All right. Well, now that we know, before any of the teams lose, because we really don't know what's going to happen, I just want to put that out there. But now we can roll out of the NBA and go into our next segment. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We just finished with our NBA segment, the playoffs, starting on Monday. We're going to move it into the NCAA, which is kind of a new segment that we didn't talk about last time, but we said that we would talk about this time, and that's, you know, what what, te- what uh, conferences are doing about the COVID-19 pandemic. We obviously saw that the Big Ten, unfortunately, said that they won't have a season this fall, and so did the Pac-12. And many athletes have been vocal about it. Uh, Justin Fields started a petition this weekend, um, the We Want to Play petition. And as of noon Sunday, I saw that it had 100,000 votes or what, what, a petition, yeah, vote, I guess, uh, or signatures to uh, to play. There you go. There you go. But um, other athletes have been vocal about it, like Trevor Lawrence. You know, those are two guys that are in the 2021 draft, uh, supposedly, if they if – they, uh, join the draft so I just want to see what you guys think about it I mean you know yes what what the logistics are you know think about it realistically and think about uh in the athlete's perspective and then obviously in the conference's perspective well I first want to say that um when the Big Ten first came out with the news that they weren't going to play I mean I'm an Ohio State fan I've made that known so I was definitely I was bummed to hear that I wasn't going to be watching any Ohio State football but I think what was more surprising to me was the fact that Nebraska came out and said, no matter what, we're playing. If we have to join a different conference, we're playing football. So that that just kind of jumped out to me as a matter of fact of, like, they're going to play. Like, like, if these teams want to play, they'll play. Um, I, I don't think – they necessarily, you know, if if they want to play, you know, they're going to play. I don't think emotions are going to drive them past that NCAA jurisdiction. But um, I think the NCAA has just handled this so poorly. They have no plan coming up for this season. I mean, even you look at the MLB, they are not doing the best job, but at least they have something in mind instead of canceling the season. If the NCAA cancels the season, I don't know what they're doing. What is their plan? How are they going to keep these players safe? And these players are coming out just saying, oh, we want to play. We want to play. You know, Trevor Lawrence was saying, oh, you'd be uh, less safe if you don't play, which is – I don't know how that's even possible. You know, you have a much higher chance of getting the coronavirus if you're constantly in a group of 80-plus people every day on a football field. So – I, I, NCA needs to come up with something. I feel like it's too too little, too late with what they've done. I think they've just kind of mailed it in. They've kind of just said, "Yeah, you guys do whatever you want." You know, we're just stepping back this fall, which is <laughs> just to what? kind of talk about your your point there on Trevor Lawrence. Um, wh- what his point kind of was was all these athletes on these teams. You don't know <clears throat> where in the country they're going home to. I mean, they could be going home to Florida that's right now spiking. They could be going to Texas or Arizona or all of these places that are spiking. So them being at their colleges quarantined with their teammates could in the end be the safer, safer spot for them. Cause mm-hmm. you, you all put them there 
and you quarantine it for two weeks. Every single player gets tested. Any player that tests positive remains in their dorm room. The rest start practicing, and you, you get stuff in motion. There has to be some sort of motion. I am not a Trevor Lawrence fan I've, as far as his football perspective here, but I think what he's trying to do right now for college football and for his, for his surrounding athletes, I think it's good. I, I think that he's trying to stand up. I think that in the end, relaying this back to football here, NFL teams are going to look at this in his, in his draft analysis and say, that kid's a leader. That's someone that we want on our team. He is stepping up and he's showing off and he's speaking out for all these kids. That's someone who I want to lead my football team. Tommy, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that you both make really good points. And it, it's just a difficult situation about what's right and Obviously, first and foremost, you have to keep the players safe, right? And um, like you said, Mike, they don't really seem to have much of a plan right now. And I think that's kind of why those two conferences did um, choose to, you know, postpone their seasons. But I don't know. I mean, it it is difficult. And like you said, uh, Connor, like with Trevor Lawrence saying that they'd be safer, um, you know, being quarantined and I think there there might be a safe way to do it, but I don't know. I'm kind of conflicted on this because I feel like if one team gets it, um, you know, in baseball, like you said, we're kind of seeing how it's not spread from team to team because they're playing outside. But we all know baseball is an entirely different sport than football. In football, you're tackling. And um, I feel like if someone did get it, if there was an outbreak on a team, say, somebody contracted on Friday and then they play on Saturday and, you know, they didn't test positive yet. And then you spread to the other team, you know, that's not a good situation. Right. So I don't know. I'm conflicted on it. I think we'd all like to see them play, but um, I'm not really sure what the, the best way would be to keep everyone safe. I mean, maybe postponing the season until the spring. What do you guys think about that? I think that that's, that's okay. I mean, my take on this is uh, that, you know, I don't think the NCAA handled this or the conferences rather handled this, you know, good at all. I get that. It's a hard decision. I even talked about this with one of my friends. It's a hard decision, but I don't even think they really even thought about any logistics. Yes. The logistics would be hard, obviously quarantining uh, student athletes, uh, you know, getting them separated from other people, keeping them in place. I mean, you know, Schools are part, some schools are party schools, you know, keeping them, uh, you know, keeping them straight and focusing on football, which is why they're there. And, you know, the quarterbacks, Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence, what they're doing is I think is great because they're two athletes that are big faces of the uh, NCAA football division one. Obviously they're like Joe Burrow and Tua Tagovailoa like last year, like they're, they're players that can be in the NFL next year or the next years to come. That could be great. And I think to, what what Trevor was saying to uh, like going off what Connor said is that some kids you don't know where they're from like they could be from like poorly populated cities or like um, cities that are, are have a, like a hot spot like you know maybe and you know you just don't know where they're coming from and I think that these are some people's livelihoods to play football to go to school to play football and to get better to go to the NFL so I think that taking it away could be could hurt the hurt the athletes but you know, we're also in a pandemic. So there's that too. And then also to talk about, you know, these, some kids go out to play football. That's kind of like how they relieve stress or like, you don't know what's going on in their life at home or something, you know, they're, they're having issues. So I think that playing football is kind of their good for their mental health. And I think that Zach Ertz uh, tight end at Philadelphia Eagles, he touched on that, how the NCAA for the PAC 12, he went to Stanford. So obviously he was vocal about that, how they should have things for the athletes, things for the people to relieve stress because mental health is obviously, it, it's big for, for us in this pandemic. So that, that's what I was thinking myself. One thing, one thing I don't want us to do though is to center this all around football because there are so many other athletes who also have now lost their seasons, whether it was in the, in the spring or, or now that they're losing their season in the fall. So yes, College football is known to bring the, the money and everything and the popularity to all these big name D1 schools. But let's not forget about all those, those college soccer players and lacrosse and all of those other such players who, who are losing their seasons as well. 
Well, well, not only losing their seasons, some colleges are completely taking away the majority of their programs. I mean, I, I know Buffalo, I was talking to someone from Buffalo uh, a couple weekends ago, and she was saying that they were taking away so many of their programs. And I was like, wow, like, you know, this, this pandemic, you know, really has hit some of these colleges hard. And, you know, it's going to be hard to keep a lot of these sports around. So I feel like we got to just focus on, you know, growing back and, you know, getting back to a, a state of normalcy. You know, we always talk about that state of normalcy. We have no idea when it's going to come. But it's it's really horrible for all those kids that don't even get a shot. You know, you know, at least football right now, it's kind of up in the air. And we've seen it with the NFL. I think so far it's been pretty good. You know, obviously some players have been placed on the COVID list or whatever. But I think the NFL has handled it pretty well. There hasn't been any major outbreaks like the MLB so far. We will see uh, if that continues when game starts. But um, I think the NCA can put something in place so where the players can be safe. It's just a matter of if. And I just don't think the NCA has a capable has the capability of doing it. I think they're a corrupt organization. And I mean, the only reason I see them bringing the season back is for the money. At the end of the day, money talks. And I think that can be a completely different topic that we can talk about another day. Because I have some very strong feelings about the NCAA. And I don't want to kind of stray away from our, our main topic here. So maybe if that's something our viewers would be interested in, that can be another topic for another I day. I mean, just one point on that is the two biggest money makers are basketball and football. When you take away football, that's when they cut the sports out. Because you're losing money. That's when they start cutting the sports out. So that's that's the big thing about cutting college football. You're losing that money. That's why they're cutting other sports out. So, yeah, money talks. But, you know, in this case, it could be good for other sports. But, I mean, they also do put it other places too, which, you know, it's, it's, it's all shady there. But I think that by cutting these sports, you actually could be cutting more sports for a, a longer period of time. I, I, it's I, definitely I, a hard subject to talk about. I agree with that point there. Yeah, it is, it is hard. It is hard to talk about. Do we have I, any last-minute last, last minute comments, I guess, before we move into our pick segment? No, I'm ready. Let's go, baby. All right. I guess we'll be right back with the pick segment where I will continue to stay on top. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat here. We just kind of had a uh, – touchy subject there with the NCAA and everything they're doing. Really, there's, there's a lot of question marks left in the air. But one question mark that is not left up in the air is, who's at the top of the leaderboard here for the Pickums? It's me. No worries. Just keep, keep, keep calling me the king. Tag the king in the comments in, uh, on GoChat's uh, video on Sunday, and then tag the other king on Monday. All right. Let's get right into our Pickum segments here. You know I'm behind my one game, right? It's okay. You're, you're, that's still second. First loser. Let's get right into our, uh, our, our picks. We were talking about the NBA uh, first uh, playoffs there earlier in the episode. So let's start off with one of the highly contested games, Thunder versus Rockets game one. Obviously, I was the lone person. Nope. Tommy, you went with the Rockets as well, right? I did. Yep. Us two went with the Rockets, and then Mike and Matt went with the, uh, the Thunder in the series overall. So, Matt, why don't we start with you for game one? <laughs> Thunder. Come on. No Russell Westbrook. It's the Thunder. Mike? I'm agreeing with Matt. It's going to be the Thunder. No Westbrook. Um, the, the season series has been tightly competitive with Westbrook in the lineup. Take him out. Thunder. Tom? This is tough because it's just for the one game. Um, I don't know. I'm going to stick with the Rockets. I think they're going to pull out that game one win. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty close series. I think I said six games. I think it's going to be um, in the end. And obviously, Russell Westbrook not being there plays a huge factor into game one tomorrow night. I think it's going to be a close one, but I got Houston tomorrow night. Well, I'm, I'm going to go with the Thunder here. I think I think Houston is going to get the – I think they're going to get blown out. They're going to get blown out in game one, and Houston's never going to let it happen again. They're going to win four straight to win the series. I think Connor's a little scared to start That's losing something. Thing yes. <laughs> Blasphemy! He has to go with the majority, but I, I'll I, introduce... I can show you my he, He's playing it safe right now because he knows if he picks the Rockets 
and the Rockets lose, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm right on no. his tail. I'm right no. with him. No, I'm God. already on the bottom, so I don't have anything to lose. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> connor has got everything to lose. He's been you. all this Before we started filming, I wrote down our pick and I circled all the teams that I was circling. I went Thunder, no question, because I do believe game one's going to go to the Thunder. They're going to come out, and they're, they're going to they're gonna surprise the Rockets. They really are. And then they're going to come back for game two, and okay. Houston's going to be firing on all cylinders. Okay. okay they're not so going to let it happen again. Just, just to clarify, you think Thunder's winning game one by a record margin, and then Houston's going to come back and win four in a row. Yes. Okay. All right. We're going to move into the next one. I'll, I'll introduce this so Connor doesn't have to copy what Mike does. So, Connor, I'm going to start with you. Calgary Flames versus Dallas Stars, game five. They just had a game today, Sunday, uh, that went into overtime. Dallas just won that. So, who do you got for game five to take out the series? I picked them in, uh, in round one of the uh, our pick them. I'm going to pick them here. It's the Dallas Stars. Tommy, who are you going to roll with? I'm going to go with Dallas as well. I had to look at my bracket to see what I had. But, yeah, I don't know. I just have a feeling it's going to be Dallas. Mike? Well, thank God he let Connor go first because he picked the wrong answer. It's the Calgary Flames here. They've won games one and three, while Dallas has won have won games two and four. He's going – he's going so – It's one and one and two and two. Exactly, like, exactly. So it's going to go back to the Flames. Then the Flames are going to come back. They're going to win game six, too. I'll call that right now. The Flames are winning game five and six, and they're closing out the series 4-2 like I predicted. The Flames are winning game five after a tough game today, uh, overtime game. And I think they're going to come out and they're going to beat the Stars. Oh, man. Who am I going to go with now? I think I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Dallas Stars. They're, they're rolling on that Pavelski hat trick. I think Joel, Joe Pavelski is going to come out here and he's going to do something magical again. Close game. But, bro, I got to roll with the I gotta roll with the Stars here. You had to roll with the King. No, I got to roll with the stars. Okay, Not just a reminder, the last time they all picked against me in the, in the NHL, I won. I won. Oh, right. the that's Hurricane right. The Bruins game? Yeah, get, all, right. Uh, all right. Well, whatever. You know, um, you... Why don't you introduce our MLB series for us? Yeah, so this one's pretty intriguing. I think it's the Baltimore Orioles against the Toronto or Buffalo Blue Jays. <laughs> um, the Blue Jays have been playing well lately. You know, although their record is 7-11, and 11, um, you know, they've been showing some signs of improvement. The offense has been rolling a little more. And Baltimore has kind of surprised some people as well. Um, they're playing very well. Let me see. Their record um, is 12-9, and nine, which, you know, yeah, many thought they were going to be right at the bottom there. So, guys, what do you think? I'll start with you, Con. Baltimore. There's no hesitation here. It's Baltimore. What do you think, uh, Mike? I got to roll with Baltimore. Shout out my man, D- Dean Fence, is a huge Orioles fan. But I got to roll with Baltimore. I could only name one player on their team, Jose Iglesias. Other than that, I just I just know they're hot right now and they're being teams up. I'm rolling with the Orioles. Yeah, what do you think, man? Uh, I got to go with the Orioles, too. I mean, the Blue Jays just lost Bo Bichette for a little while. He has a knee injury. He's on my beloved fantasy team that put up 711 fantasy points, 300 more than this person behind me, and that's who I was playing. Shout out, Dane Richardson. Sorry I had to do that to you this week, but I got to go with the Orioles. Yeah, I'm going to disagree here. I think that the Blue Jays, I don't know. I like their young team. They have Vladdy, obviously. You said Bo's going to be out for a little bit. Um but I, I have a feeling that they're going to play well. They've uh, Hyunjin Ryu going in game one. I just have a good feeling. I think that they're starting to roll a little more. And, um, you know, the Blue Jays are a team that always plays hard. They have a good manager, Charlie Montoyo. And I, but I, I'm going to say two out of three. I don't think it's going to be a sweep, but I have the Blue Jays in this one. Didn't the Blue Jays lose today against the Rays? They, well, mm-hmm. one of the games. They had a doubleheader. Oh, okay. Tommy's going to try to get a run for his money. That's try to get Tommy's up. Tommy's looking board. for right now. Tommy's going for a run. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. They lost both the games today. Yeah, I was, I was going to I was gonna say I was a little confused when you said they're going. <laughs> but anyways, you got the Blue Jays. I think that kind of wraps up our picking segment. What do you guys think? Yeah. All right. Let's roll right into the go of the week. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We are now into the go of the week segment. Um 
Last week, the results were Luka Doncic won. It turns out Matt saying his name 15 or 16 times. 17, right? 17. No. Oh, yes, man. That's, that's a lot of times in an, in an episode. Turns out he won. You know, he did have an outstanding performance. So, shout out to Matt and Luka Doncic. But this week, it's a different week. Matt, who are you going with? I'm going to go with Jonas Corposalo. <laughs> He's the goaltender for the Columbus Blue Jackets. You know, he, on Tuesday, the opening day of the NHL playoffs, he got a record in playoffs, 85 saves in a five-overtime match against the Tamp- Mike's beloved Tampa Bay Lightning that he talked up so much about winning the Stanley Cup. He got 85 saves out of 88 shots against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay was going hammer on them every overtime. And then the next game, Blue Jackets won. He got 36 saves. Great game for him. Uh, you know, Blue Jackets could upset the Tampa Bay Lightning. Who knows? Okay. okay. What happened in the first game? You're, you're talking all the smack about Tampa Bay. Who won the first game? Five overtimes. Who won the first game? Guys, but he went five overtimes against a team that you talked up so much about winning the Stanley Cup. Five overtimes. A team that has Braden Point, Steven Stamkos, Vasilevsky, Victor Hedman. He has Nikita Kucherov. Five overtimes. Five overtimes. And a, and a record. A record. That is GOAT material. Right okay. There. Okay, I just need to defend the Lightning for a second because they did win that game. And they did win the third game. But they didn't win the second. I can save them then. They didn't win the second. Anyways, we we move on. We move on. It's a great pick. It is a great pick. Corbisal did have an insane performance. We've never seen that before in the the NHL. Um, Anyways, we can move on from the game one loser, Neonis Corbisal. Connor, who's your goal of the week? Game two winner. And going to be the series winner. So I'm, I'm going to go with someone who I, I mentioned in our earlier episodes here for a go to the week. I'm going to go with Colin Morikawa. He's a, he's a golfer. Um, he's only 23 years old. And in his first PGA Championship appearance last Sunday, obviously I couldn't pick him last week because the event was still going on. He finished first. He's 23 years old in his first appearance. He, he, he won it. The only other person to ever do that, Tiger Woods. Now, Colin hit a he hit a great shot on 16. It was a drivable par four, like 300 yards, driver, five feet from the hole. Now this is when they were tied at 11 under. There was like a four-way tie for the lead. Five shot from the hole, one putt eagle to put him two ahead. Never looked back. Won it as a 23-year-old. Moved him to 13th overall in the world rankings. He came came away with a little bit of dough in his pocket. Look, I, I know it's not the most popular vote, and the people who aren't watching right now probably aren't going to pick me, but Colin Morikawa definitely had a GOAT weekend last weekend, and he deserves all the votes that I will get this week, and he deserves all the recognition. Tommy, who you got? Well, I think those are both great picks, but I'm going to go with somebody that I wouldn't have picked last year. I'm going to go with Mookie Betts, the second best <laughs> right fielder in baseball behind Aaron Judge, of course. <laughs> um, he had an incredible week. He had 11 hits, four home runs, nine RBIs, scored eight runs, and three of those home runs came in one night. It was the sixth time that he had done that in his career. That's, I mean, that's remarkable. How how can you do that six times? And how young? He's like 29 or 30 years old. He's incredible. Mookie Betts, he's one of my favorite non-Yankees, I'd have to say. I wouldn't admit it last year. Um, you know, Mookie's great. How could you not like Mookie? He's going to do great things out there in LA. And um, yeah, he just had a great week. And I'm looking forward to being the king of uh, Go of the Week again. Wow. That is a bold claim coming from someone who doesn't talk a lot of smack. I know, but I, I love it, though. I love the confidence, Tommy. Thank you. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to shatter all your guys' confidence right here. Because, listen, if you guys do not pick me this week, or if you don't pick my player, most importantly, you guys are off your rocker. I don't know. You guys are insane. You guys are asinine. Whatever adjective you want to use. He's calling he, – okay, first off, he's calling you guys out if you don't pick him. What? Do you guys really want to vote for him? 
Yeah, because you know who I'm picking? I'm picking Dame Dollar, Damian Lillard, Logo Lillard, whatever you want to call him. He's been insane. Unanimous bubble MVP. Over the last three bubble games, 51.3 points per game, 56 field goal percent, 48 three-point percentage, 95% from the, from the free throw line against the Mavs. Connor, you picked the Blazers that game. Props to you. The, the Blazers need every single one of those 61 points Damian Lillard put up. Every single one. Without one of those points, they would have lost that game. Not only that, thank you, Connor, again, for providing this graphic to me. You know who scored the most points in the three final regular season games in all time? Damian Lillard. He has 150 points over the last three games. Kobe Bryant is second with 128. Not only this, but he beat the Grizzlies uh, yesterday on Saturday to push the Blazers to push the Blazers into the playoffs. No. If you want to go to the week, that's it right there. Damian Lillard has been the best player in the NBA the past week. It's Dame Dalla, Logo Lillard, Damian Lillard. Go to the week, baby. I mean. Mike, you can breathe now. Like, take a breath. I no. think, guys, Mike didn't want to mention this, but he's gone goose egg for the last two weeks. That's why you got to come back strong, baby. With, with Dak Prescott. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. He got zero <laughs> last week with Dak Prescott. <laughs> Just, he, he obviously didn't. No, I got one. I got one. No, Shout you got Connor <laughs> Wood off of a different account. Because <laughs> you felt bad for you. I don't know why. That is true. I don't because know. He knows Dak Prescott did something noble last week. <laughs> He's kind of like, eh, eh. Of course, Dak Prescott sneaks into another ep- – well, actually, I mentioned him, so I'm not even going to come back. Yeah, you, you, you brought it up. Anyways, listen, at, at the end of the day, these were all great picks. You know, I, I could talk all the smack I want. You know, I could joke around. But these were all great picks at the end of the day. You know, you, you guys go vote uh, on our Instagram story. It's probably going to go up sometime Wednesday. And you guys could vote there who you think is the go of the week. Um, so I think that kind of wraps it up. Any extra comments, guys? Give the go of the week a listen, and I promise you, you guys will think Colin Mori Cow is the pick. I know really? you guys will probably look at his picture here and not know who he is, but I promise you, if you look up the name and if you watch me explain it, it gives him a good repertoire. Did I'll you tell not you. just listen to my whole rant? Colin, Colin, I was about to have a heart attack. I was gonna have an aneurysm. How are you not gonna give me the go of the week? I put my body on the line for the go of the week. I don't see Colin, you are doing Mookie the same. That's though. There's no way. Tommy, I don't think Mookie even touches the three these three guys to be honest. Oh no, I, I think Mookie comes. What are you talking at about? Least in oh, first off, your argument. You said Aaron Judge is the best right fielder. You didn't even mentioned Christian Yelich at all. First, or that's Cody the Bellinger. first off. Or Cody Bellinger. There you go. Thank you. But. I know. Connor, isn't Corey, isn't Colin Mori Cower the one that dropped the, <laughs> didn't he drop the trophy or something like the top part of the trophy? I think I, I saw I a video of that. that. If he did, I might have to, I might have to rethink this. Wait, is that okay? Wait, one last week? Yes. Yeah. No, I I he watched. Dropped, it. Did he? Or wait, like, flew I off or something. I saw the trophy fall. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait. Wait. Guys. 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 Just to show the confidence Connor has in Colin Morikawa, he tried to change his pick before the show. He no, tried no, no. to change it. I, I forgot that I was going to pick him, and I was looking at other stats from this week, and then I remembered that he had this great performance last week, and he had an eagle on the 16th hole to win the tournament, and I was like, okay, that is goat worthy. I think I think we need to stop with the goat chat exposed part of the episode. Yeah, let's not forget. I gave you part of your information. Hey, they, I said thank you. So, so if, if Mike, wins, I didn't get it. You're welcome back. That's oh, kind of rude. I'm getting. If Mike wins, we got to give the point to Connor. I'm, what? I'm, no, I would have won without the crap. He averaged fifty hearing. points over three games. But I, what I've been hearing is that Connor gave you a couple of. The stats that Maybe you've been putting one out. Statistic. I mean, you're still taking outsider information. I mean, we we got to think about that, but we okay, won't get you know, Next time, I'll go through every single season and account for every single player that has scored a large amount of points in the last three games of the regular season. There you we, right. we, we like it. <laughs> We've kind of gotten very sidetracked here. If you guys <laughs> just stick with us through this entire thing, we really do appreciate you. 
Um, thanks again for all the birthday wishes. I really did appreciate it. Yes, happy so birthday. Out the, the amazing edit from Matt. It was a, it was a really funny video. Um, um, we'll be back on Thursday. We'll see Thursday. you guys. Don't forget to, uh, Tommy, what do they have to do to that? Subscribe. Oh, button. smash the subscribe button. There we go. Don't forget to do that. Follow us on our main uh, Instagrams as well as go chat Instagram. But now we will see you guys on Thursday. Thank <laughs> you.